Welcome back to College Football 25. Today in the Buffalo Bulls dynasty, we're taking on the Yukon Huskies. The Bulls enter at 2-2 two two on the season, and we're not just competing against the Huskies on the football field today, but we're also the two teams trying to get quarterback Eric Pacheco, a Connecticut native. We still don't have anybody committed in this recruiting class, but we are leading a number of our most crucial battles. We only have 400 hours to spend a week, so it's been a challenge figuring out how to divvy those up. I'm trying to go aggressive on our top prospects so that we can get those battles hopefully over with sooner, and then later on in the year we can try to fill as many spots as we can with 29 outgoing seniors. So we're going to try to scout a bit more efficiently. We buy the upgrades for offensive line and DB. It's tough early in this series when we have to spend so many points scouting players and we don't have that many to begin with. But let's talk more about the on-field action in this series. We are a weird team. It's hard to get a real grasp of who this team is with how inconsistent we've been. We took Missouri down to the wire and then got blown out by UMass, but we are coming off our best defensive performance and a 100-yard rushing day for Lamar Sperling. Jaden Oliver caught our first interception last episode, and I want to see our defense continue to make some plays to take a little pressure off of the offense. Today we take on a UConn team that is independent and is a pretty even matchup on paper compared to us. They have an intriguing sophomore quarterback in Nick Evers. He was a four-star prospect, and the Huskies come in very pass-heavy. They have not ran the ball well this year whatsoever. They come in 1-3, the only victory against an FCS school, and against their three FBS opponents, they failed to top 17 points. So let's see if Buffalo, for the first time in this series, can put together a win streak. There were a lot of positives to take away from that Northern Illinois game. The defense played their best all year, even compared to the FCS game we played. So we're on to game five today, already approaching midseason, and we are underway in front of hundreds of Huskies fans. And Buffalo will open at the 25-yard line for C.J. Ogbonna. Nine touchdown passes to eight interceptions on the year. Expect to see more of number 32, Lamar Sperling, as Ogbonna's back to pass. He drifts to the right and is taken down by Jelani Stafford. Buffalo breaking out the alternate road uniforms today, and it's third and long with a deep shot downfield. That is caught! That's Chance Morrow into Husky territory. How about 55 to the sophomore receiver? Big time throw there from C.J. Ogbonna. We haven't had much of a deep ball passing game this year, but in isolation, he's one of those guys you've got to give a chance. Morrow has speed, size, and he's proven to be a difference maker. First and 10, Ogbonna on the keeper. He picks up a gain of five. Spreading out the Husky defense with four receivers, and the carry goes nowhere. That's Jaquez Barksdale, and it sets up third down. McMillan isolated on the right side, and the pass is nearly intercepted. Undercut by Julian Simon. So for the Bulls, a field goal try, and the kick is good for the senior Chandler Carson. And now we'll see the Husky offense, and if our defense can bring that same energy they brought to the Huskies last game. It's a run to start, and Cam Edwards gets seven. Evers to throw for the first time on second down, and they give him plenty of time, hooking up with Josiah Gathings for the first down. Ball at the 40. Evers facing a four-man rush, and he throws across the middle, and that's well defended by Sean Dolak. The Bulls have forced third and eight. They bring pressure, and not on the same page with his receiver. Incomplete. And the Bulls get it back. Ball at the 21. It's Ogbonna pressured on the play. He buys time and overthrows Andrew Schneckenberg. 
Second down, it's a screen, seen a lot of these. Chance Morrow with a block from J.J. Jenkins, and it's a gain of eight. Creates a third and short, and it's gonna be Ogbonna keeping for the first down as he safely slides. Two tight ends still for the Bulls, and now a screen set up, and here's Sperling, he breaks a tackle, gets into the open field, it's a first down. Last week we saw more of him as a rusher. I'd still like to see even more as a receiver. First and 10, a quick pass to the outside for Jenkins, the senior who leads us in receptions. And on third down, coming across the middle now, Chance Morrow, first down, great start to the day for him. Three for 74. And the Bulls are driving again. The pass quickly thrown out to McMillan, but he can't handle it. Now Jenkins in motion. A flip to him as he tries to get around the edge and picks up six. On the edge of field goal range. It's Ogbonna on third down, and that pass hits the ground. It's Taji Johnson who couldn't make the play. So a long field goal try. Cameron Carson... 49-yard try is good. Big kick there, 6-0 Buffalo. So far, a good first quarter for the Bulls as the run goes inside to Victor Rosa for a good pickup. Bulls trying to get off the field quickly, and the quick slant. That's a catch for Nick Harris, the tight end. First quarter nearly complete as Evers is taken down from behind. That was Solomon Brown. Well-timed blitz for Buffalo. And again, third down for the Huskies. They'll face a blitz, pick up the pressure, and now wide open, they got a chance. Big gain into Bull territory. Jonathan Capo with a poor tackle attempt. All the way to the 27 is Gathings. Bulls trying to get aggressive. They send another rusher as Oliver gets his hand on that pass. Third down Huskies. They need the 12 and get it. A leap from Victor Rosa has first down yardage. Red zone trip for the Huskies. Another run and a first and goal for Cam Edwards. This is already the best their run game has looked all year. And now they're going to open it up. Empty and Evers on the draw is in. Touchdown, UConn. Great possession. And the Bulls just aren't able to get off the field on third down. One thing they've struggled with this year is creating pressure. And a good four-star quarterback is going to make you pay for that. Buffalo ball. It's a mid-screen. And McMillan following blocks for first down yardage. With the Bulls trailing by one. Screen for senior Taji Johnson. Good block, McMillan. First down. We use those screens to complement the running game that's had some trouble this year. Plenty of time to throw now. And Ogbonna hooks up with Morrow. Already 100 yards on the day. He's down to the UConn 24. Another drive with Buffalo on the move. And it's out quickly. Good catch by Sperling. And Ogbonna moves to 10 of 14 passing. In the red zone on first down. A little hesitation. And down goes Ogbonna. UConn hoping to force another field goal try. It's third and 10. Ogbonna to the end zone and swatted down. Not enough air under it. And out again comes Carson, now 32 yards out, and that's off the upright. He doinked it, and Buffalo trails still. You gotta finish possessions. Three minutes to go in the first half, UConn ball. And it's gonna be Evers running outside. He's taken down after a gain of six. Here they open it up again. Empty Forever's on second down. And that one is contested and incomplete. Another play for number seven, Solomon Brown. Brings up third and four. And that catch is made. Even with the great coverage, UConn keeps converting third downs. We got two minutes left. That is overthrown for the running back. 
Backing off the safeties, quick pass over the middle and complete for a good pickup. UConn keeping third downs manageable. Needing three, caught again, first down. Harris, the tight end, has UConn back in scoring range. They look to end this half strong. Evers finds him again as Harris just bounces off the Sean Dolak hit. Huskies figuring things out here in the second quarter. Second down and wide open, turning it up inside the five and down to about the three. Timeout for Buffalo. They've got two left. And the carry goes to Rosa, and he's in. Touchdown, UConn. So far, the Huskies out running, out pass protecting, and doing a better job of hauling in contested passes. That's why they got two touchdowns and we have two field goals. Buffalo did burn a timeout to give themselves a chance here before the half. And it's going to be Messiah Birch. He angles outside, has to get around a man and can't. But a good run back still. Ball at the 46. 35 on the clock and it's a quick hitter. J.J. Jenkins out of bounds, gain of six. Not far from field goal range. But third and four, have to make a play, and the pass is hauled in. That's Jenkins. Beautiful ball delivered by Ogbonna. And they're in business now, 16 on the clock. CJ looking toward the end zone. He wants McMillan out of bounds. A half step from six. They might have time for one more of these shots. It's lofted up. Morrow can't bring it in. And he got his hands on it, too. Ogbonna gave him as good of a chance as he could have hoped for. But we have not made these tough catches. And that is going to bring up the fourth field goal try of the day for Chandler Carson. And he's now three for four. The Bulls cannot find the end zone in the first half, despite moving the football up and down the field. The teams that have success can win third down, and they play well in the red zone, and we just haven't done that to this point. I want to thank you all for all the support here in the Buffalo Bulls dynasty so far. It's been a really fun start to the series. If you haven't already done so, subscribe for much more Buffalo Bulls dynasty. We're only getting started here in Season 1. Let's get into the second half now. 14-9 UConn. Evers will start. He keeps and runs for the first down. We've seen that a couple times from them. They've actually ran the football pretty well. And the throw is out, but broken up on the play. That's coverage linebacker Dion Crawford defending. Brings up third and ten. Too much time. Ever still forced to check it down, and they nearly get it. The Bulls bend and nearly broke. But they're getting off the field at least, and the punt is sent deep and out of bounds at the five-yard line. So the Bulls backed up, spurling the running back, and it's going to be CJ taking a big loss on this play. Now they fall back to the two. They're in their own end zone. It's Barksdale. He loses one. It's been an ugly day trying to run today. So now a full yard out of the end zone. And a dangerous throw out to Sperling, but he catches it, and it's a three and out for Buffalo. Mello Dodge punting from the end zone. Not going to make it further than the 40. Really good field position for the Huskies. Three wide as Evers scans the field, sets his feet, and finds the open man. Without pass rush... You're not going to make it far against competent passing games. Already at the 23. A lot of time and wide open. Gathings inside the five. Goal to go, Huskies. They've already put on two touchdowns. And now Evers against the pressure. What a throw and catch. Touchdown, TJ Sheffield. That's a really good looking play. They had Oliver out there just a step too far to the inside. There's barely a window there. That's an impressive throw he just made. And it's 21 to nine. 
Buffalo's got to be feeling the pressure now, and Sperling's going nowhere. I mean, where are you supposed to go when your left guard gets thrown on the ground and you're supposed to run behind him? It's all on the pass game today for the Bulls. On second down, Orlando keeps a tight hold on the football and sets up third and five. Ogbonna to the air, facing pressure. What a throw! J.J. Jenkins, first down. That was a money ball right there. Now they bring Jenkins in motion. It's a play action. Down goes Ogbonna. And he looks to be shaken up on the play. Our starting quarterback is down. And coming into the game is going to be junior quarterback Jack Shields. He has only thrown three passes on the year. Welcome to third and 15, Jack. He's back to pass. Hits McMillan. He's got room to run. Sprinting inside the 20. He will take it down to the six. How about that for a conversion? Husky fans can't believe it. And that's CJ Ogbonna coming back out. He's good to go. Goal to go, Buffalo. Ogbonna to the end zone, and it's picked. Intercepted, Huskies football. The pass goes behind Chance Morrow instead of leading him to the outside. That needs more air under it. Huge missed opportunity with the Bulls already down multiple scores. Yukon ball, fake to Rosa, and it's nearly picked right back. Karen Robinson just dropped it. Second down, that's wide open. Turning up field, gain of 10. They give him the first down, that's Skylar Bell. Third quarter nearly done, and a good run here again. Cam Edwards has done a really good job when they've gone his way. Now a little misdirection. Edwards carries, cuts to the right. Look at all the space. Nothing but green against this run defense. Now they're going to bring down the extra man. And down goes Evers. Tackled by Dion Crawford. Third down. You know this is a massive play. Too much time. No one near him. And wide open in the middle. That's Harris. Somebody needs to win up front. Back to pass on first down, and wide open, Rosa jukes him out! Touchdown, UConn! Nothing is going our way today. UConn blowing us out 27-9. How is nobody out there defending the running back? Wheel routes are just undefeated. Jonathan Capo juked out of his shoes. 28 to 9 here in the fourth. Ogbonna's gonna scramble with the Huskies in man coverage. There's nobody home until he crosses midfield. That's our best run of the day. And Ogbonna facing heavy pressure. Had an open Morrow, but not enough time to hit him. Third and ten, more pressure coming, and that's open. McMillan in the middle. First down. So you need three scores here with one quarter to do it. Dumped off to Sperling. A lot more production as a pass catcher in this game. They have not really ran the ball much. And now it's not an option. Off the fake. Too much pressure again. If we could just get an extra half second on some of these plays, we got something. Third and one. Caught. Taji Johnson to the 11. New set of downs and time to throw, but out of reach for Orlando. Ogbonna's had a couple just out of reach today. But it's second down. He has Morrow down inside the one. They do not signal touchdown. Inches away. Sneaking in is C.J. Ogbonna. Touchdown at last for the Buffalo Bulls. That took a long time for an offense that had moved the football pretty well. It is now a 12-point game. Seven minutes to go. Evers, what a day for him. That is complete to Sheffield. He's looked really good today. 
It's also been mostly a seven on seven game for him. On the screen, Victor Rosa. That's a big gain and a first down. If Buffalo wants to make it interesting, they're gonna have to make a play. How about this pocket? And Evers wants to go deep downfield, swatted down in the end zone. Marcus Fuqua with good coverage. Now they bring the pressure, and that is up in the air. Contested and incomplete, third and 10. And it's a run that goes nowhere. Too strong up the middle. Buffalo, five minutes to go. They trail by 12, and CJ Ogbonna throws short for Orlando. Good catch and run to the 45. Tempo now for the Bull offense. CJ stepping up, wants to run, and has space. Outside and out of bounds at the 42 of the Huskies. 4.20 left to play. Caught first down, Chance Morrow. Three receivers for Buffalo on second down. Here comes pressure. Buying time on the outside. Ogbonna fires deep and hits Jenkins. Yes, he caught it. Touchdown, Buffalo. What a play. It's one of their best all season. CJ Ogbonna making magic here in the fourth quarter. And the Bulls are within one score. What a catch. That's good on Sundays, even. We got ourselves a game suddenly. 28-23. Can the defense get us the ball one more time? Hands off. Cam Edwards. Falling forward. Good gain of five. 3.20 to go. It's going to be a pass and a catch. Harris having a great day. First down. Buffalo definitely thinking run here on this drive. Evers keeping and has some room too. That's a big seven yards. Buffalo's got to be ready for these. They run it with Edwards and the middle's wide open. And there's just no room for error. We're inside two minutes. They have only two timeouts. Misdirection and Edwards is funneled back inside. Timeout. Eight-man box. Stuffing Edwards again. Timeout. And now Buffalo needs one more play to get their defense off the field. UConn needing five. They're going to throw for it. And it is caught for the first down. And the game-clinching play. Josiah Gathings. Aggressiveness pays off for UConn. They let their sophomore quarterback win this game for them. And they hold on for their second win, 28 to 23. Buffalo really didn't figure things out until late in this game. It was surprising to even cut it to one score. And we come that close. Who knows what could have happened if we had one more possession. But we're playing incomplete football. We knew what we'd be getting into here, taking over a one-star school. We were not making the big plays early in this game, failing in the red zone, had a lot of drops in traffic, and then we had two opportunities on passes into the end zone. If we can lob those instead, we had a couple chances for touchdowns, including that interception. On the defensive side, we just didn't do well enough up front, and that's why recruiting the best front four players that we can early on is a priority. You want to get pressure so the coverage has an easier job and you want to be able to slow down the run we didn't really do those things well today at all so two and three is where the bulls fall to our brand exposure falls with that one and we're gonna have our bye week now so a good deal of recruiting to talk about so we have been going pretty aggressively for quarterback eric pacheco we're still holding off UConn for now, and we have a visit coming up. And then for Brogan Froholt, we have made this a three-team battle. We are going to make some adjustments here, and we don't have his ideal pitch unlocked yet, so we're still sending the house. This battle is still fairly early. It's not even to the top five yet. And then for a variety of other players, you can see us in first place. 
but it's getting, you know, trickier now for Max Everett. Temple takes the lead for Addison Jovanovic. I know that just because you have a lead early on doesn't mean you're going to maintain it. So we fall into second here for Jovanovic. We're going to then schedule his visit. And then we're going with the soft sell approach. And then Leon Dingle has us bumped up to first because we're the only team to offer. But if anyone else does, I worry that he could immediately just flip to Florida and pretty much forget about us. But I think he could be a center point of an offense, especially a growing offense like ours. So we can go through our bye week then. We take it to week seven where we have our first visits being lined up. Eric Pacheco is going to be in the house. We take the lead then, having a very successful week for Brogan Froholt as we put 50 hours into this recruiting battle. At the moment, we're spending half of our weekly hours on four players. Three of those players are three stars. Max Everett is going to be scheduled for a visit. Syracuse is gaining steam in this one. We can't schedule his visit until week 12 because he already has a couple lined up. Having a week eight visit for Jovanovic should help us close the gap on Temple, but then he goes to them four weeks after. There hasn't been a lot of room to scout more players lately because we're trying to win a lot of competitive battles. There's just not enough hours to go around. I'm hoping we can get our first couple commits soon to give us more resources to spend elsewhere. But next up, we got our second game in the MAC. We're taking on the Toledo Rockets, who are 4-1, but 0-1 in conference. Keep in mind, we have not lost a conference game yet, so even at 2-3, we're a first-place Bulls team, at least at the moment. I've really been enjoying the games lately, and these are the sliders that I'm on right now. If you don't know Matt Ten, he is a slider creator that posts over on Operation Sports. I've been friends with him for a while now, and I always collaborate with him with these sliders because we look at things the same way. We want to see the same things. You'll notice here I have roughing the kicker set to off because there's just too many roughing the kicker penalties in this game. It's something they have to tune. And then I've decided on placement being my preferred passing mechanic. I did some practicing with placement and accuracy and I think that one doesn't respect the ratings as much as placement. I was throwing 20-yard corner routes with both of those interfaces, and the placement one gives you far more accuracy rating-based results, I would have to say. I'm excited to play more of this and continue year one. I love the momentum we have already. I want to get us to year two quickly, obviously. That's when the fun begins. Now, I do want to throw an update your way here at the end. What about the Saints from Madden 24? Is that going to be canceled like the last season of UTSA? Absolutely not. I have been working on that. I've done the offseason. I've played three games so far in the year. And right now, I'm just getting all the gameplay. And then I'm going to create that season. And it's not going to go up until it's ready. I'm working on college football, playing MLB the show, but yes, I'm actually still like wanting to go back and play more of the Saints. I've already spent a lot of time working on this next season, and it will be a little bit different because I'm going to be able to play all the games and I'll know kind of what's important and what to focus on when I'm actually making each episode. You're still going to have my like traditional play-by-play -play games like today's video was for instance along with games that are more like recapped and when it comes to every game that i play with the saints if it's a better experience for you being recapped it'll be recapped if it's a better experience watching the full game then you're getting that instead i'm not trying to necessarily beat madden 25's release this is a side project for me that i think is really important for me to finish not just for the series but to see what it's like making content this way because i'm really excited about what i'm going to be able to bring you i just don't know when it's going to be yet but know that i'm working on it and very excited about it as well but thanks for watching everybody hope you're enjoying the buffalo bulls dynasty because there's a lot more on the way take care see you next time